this video will show you how to use a multimeter, which is a device that combines a voltmeter, an ammeter, and an ohmmeter, things that measure voltage, uh, current, and resistance. The first important thing to know is that this is now set in the off position, and when you're finished with your device, you should always switch it back to the off position so that you don't end up um, draining the battery completely. We'll be doing three different measurements with this device, measuring resistance, voltage, and current, and you'll have a different scale for each one of those. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the lowest resistance scale. You'll see in this resistance scale there's an ohm right here, and that's how I know that this is the resistance scale. And there are several settings, five of them to be exact. The first one says 200. After that, we have 2K, 20K, 200K, and 2M. The reason that we have those different scales <coughs> is to tell us about what the maximum resistance that scale can measure. So, for example, when it is set on 200 ohms, the maximum that this thing can measure is 200 ohms. So, if I'm trying to, rem to measure a resistor that is 250 ohms, I'm going to get exactly what I see on the screen right now, which is a 1, some space, and a decimal point. That's a way for you to know that you're on the incorrect scale and you need to move up a scale. You should always start on the lowest scale and then move up till you get an accurate reading. I'll show you how to get a reading in a moment. The other important thing to know is what these letters mean here. Notice that it has 2K and 20K and 200K. Anytime you see that K, you need to multiply what you see on the screen by 10 to the third. It doesn't matter what number is in front of the K, just that that letter K is there. So, for example, if I was on this setting, and if my screen said 10.3, I would then know that my resistance is 10.3 kilo ohms, or 10.3 times 10 to the third ohms. The fact that there is a 20 there has no significance for what the actual resistance is. Looking at some other scales, we will also be measuring voltage. Voltage is right up here in the top left corner. And um, you'll notice that it has this long dash and a couple of dotted lines underneath that. That tells you that it's DC voltage as opposed to over here, which is AC voltage. We will only use the stuff over here. For the entire lab that you will be doing, you will only be on the 20 setting or on the 2 setting. Sometimes when one setting jumps around too much, it is better to go to the other setting. And you'll notice, actually as a matter of fact, if I go back to this 20 setting, I now get 0 and that's actually what I should be getting. I'm not quite sure what it was picking up on there before. The other setting we'll use is the current setting, and again that is over here marked off by this A to signify amps, and again that solid line with the dots underneath it to signify that we're looking at direct current. If you notice here, you'll see that we have five settings once again. We will never use this 10 amp setting. We're never going to get currents that are that high, so there are only four with which you should be concerned. 200 microamps, 2 milliamps, 20 milliamps, and 200 milliamps. This follows the same rule as the um, resistance, where if there is a letter M on your setting, you need to multiply what is on the screen by 10 to the negative third, and if you're on this 200 microamp setting, you need to multiply what's on the screen by 10 to the negative sixth. Again, it does not matter what number is in front of the letter. Next, I'll show you how to use this multimeter to measure the resistance across a resistor. I have two resistors here in my circuit. You'll see them right here and right here. And I'm going to switch this over to my resistance setting. Again, I'm s switching it to the very lowest resistance setting. And I have here two probes, a black and a red one. In general, the black is the negative and the red is the positive. This doesn't matter too much when you're measuring resistance, but it matters more when you're measuring voltage. Again, you'll want to put the red near the positive side of the voltage and the black near the negative side. To measure resistance, 
I just need to go on either side of this resistor here. The easiest way to do that is to just clip these probes into these springs and let go. Now you'll notice that I don't have a reading on my screen. I have a 1 followed by some space and a decimal point. That means that my resistance is higher than 200 ohms. And so I'll turn it up till I get a reading. And I'll, no, no, don't have a reading yet. Still no reading. There we go. Oh, it's kind of going in and out. If something goofy like that happens, it goes in and out, probably the best thing to do is go up in your scale until you get a constant reading. So I see that I have a reading here, 0 0.100, and I'm on the 2 mega ohm setting. So I would say 0 0.1 times 10 to the 6, or 100 kilo ohms, if I convert that. The other one will be the same, because I have two of the exact same resistors, but let's go ahead and try it just to make sure. Yep, exact same. So that's exactly what I would expect it to be. One other time I'll show you with this is that if I want to measure voltage here, again, I'm setting it to 20 volts, and I'm going to measure that across the battery. Now you'll notice that there is a little wire between these two battery prongs. That's so that these two batteries here are connected to each other, and I'll need that wire. You should ensure that you have that wire in your lab. To measure the voltage across the batteries, I'm going to stick one of these probes in the spring here and the other probe in the spring there. And you'll see that I'm measuring 2.9 volts. There's no letter on my scale, so I don't have to multiply by anything. A couple of other comments that relate specifically to this lab in general. The first thing that you will be doing is reading the color code on these resistors to determine what the coded resistance is. Sometimes that coded resistance um, will not match exactly what's on your screen. If it's just slightly off, that's fine. But if it's really off, in other words, if you coded, for example, 70 ohms, and you're getting a reading of like 100 ohms or 150 ohms, that means you probably chose the wrong color. Brown is often difficult to tell. A lot of times brown looks like purple. And red is another one. Red and orange look very similar sometimes. So if it happens that your number on your multimeter is not within the predicted range, you should go back and look at those colors again and see if you made an error in the color that you chose. That's the end of this video on how to use a multimeter. The next video will show you some more specifics about this board in general.